another up close video so today's one is another one um, with some creative expressions goodies and this is Sue Wilson's industrial chic festive collection which those of you in the UK have probably seen this collection a few years ago I think it was part of her 2019 festive collections I think I'm not 100% sure on the exact date but I think it was around then um, and she had well that I've got 11 dies I think this was the entire collection um, but I was asked to make some samples um, for this kind of launching well or being sold in America so those of you in America might have got hold of this recently um, but those of you in the UK might have already had this for a while and completely forgotten about it and just want some fresh inspiration on it because I feel like steampunk is really coming back in um, at the moment um, and there's so many gorgeous dyes that Sue designed in this and I absolutely love the way she like hid cogs inside poinsettias and put cogs onto the holly leaves and stuff as well it's just so beautiful and cogs work brilliantly as snowflakes as well so I wanted to actually film a video to show all of these because I've got 16 different samples that I created so I thought well I might as well um, film a video as I've got all of them in their packaging um, and I've got that many samples to show you so I'm going to run through um, I've got at least one sample for each set. Some of them, uh, this one in particular with all of the cogs in, uh, you can tell it was my favourite because I think I've got like four samples just mo mostly focusing on that one. Um, but yeah, I've got a few different samples of each of them using like um, some Cosmic Shimmer goodies, a couple of like distress painty kind of uh, ideas as well and using some of these... Um, Oh, that was a metallic one. But these, well, I can't remember what they were called, textured paints maybe, or kaleidoscope paints, um, in different colourways that cr allowed you to create this really textured kind of detail. I had the turquoise set and the rusty set. I don't know if you can still get them anymore. I don't, I don't know if... Um, Creative Expressions actually stock them anymore, whether you might just be able to find a retailer that still has them. But I'll tell you which products I've used as I go through as well. So... Um, I'll just put these in a better order to show you them um, and then I'll come back and show you all the samples along with the sets of dyes. I just thought it might be interesting just to give you an up close look whilst I had all of this stuff ready. Okay, so first one I'll show you is the Ransom Xmas, and this must have been the same year that she did a few other Ransom sentiments, because I'm sure I have Happy Birthday um, in my stash as well. But it's like uh, mixing and matching all sorts of different fonts together, and they're all sorts of different sizes as well. I really love the look of these, um, and this Happy Xmas is really lovely. Or if you don't like uh, using Xmas, you could easily um, cut the X out and use some alphabets to finish off the word Christmas as well, um, and it would go along with the style, because it wouldn't really matter what kind of... Um, letters that you're using because it's all ransom all different kind of letters as well so this is the first one and um, I've done I've used it on a couple of cards but I'll just show you this one that I've done so it's kind of a little bit hidden on this card but I use some uh, dark green cardstock most of the I think all of the cardstock actually is a foundations card I can't always remember the names of them the green ones are fairly new one to my collection so I'm not 100% sure on the name I know this is lime green and this is cardinal red um, I'm really not sure on the, the colour of the, the dark green there but um, beautiful like deep dark kind of green colour and then to make it look pretty and sparkly I used, if I can find it in my box of everything I kept together, um, I tapped on some Hunter Green um, Ultra Sparkle Paste so if you've never seen an Ultra Sparkle Paste before um, it's basically like their glitter bits but it's in like that clear sort of suspension and you can use this as a texture paste or I just love tapping it on because it's kind of like putting glue on and then sprinkling glitter on but without the mess so I just tapped that all over one of them stacked another one behind it and then used a bunch of the cogs from that beautiful wreath set that I'll show you later as well absolutely adore these cogs and actually this when you cut them from red it almost looks like um, a gorgeous like Christmas candy kind of sweet as well so um you know, you could use them for all sorts of different things. Cutting bright colours gives you more sweet kind of ideas, but cutting white gives you more like snowflake kind of look to it as well. And I've used excess pieces that were left over from um, other cards as well, using parts of the interior portions of some of the like fancier dyes in here as well. So that's just the Happy Xmas on there. Then... I have also got the Let It Snow sentiment, which you can kind of see on the packaging. It has this debossing sort of detail in it. Um, you can't see it on my one because I use texture 
on it to cover it up. There might have been a card later on actually that I, sh I left the texture um, on it as well. But it's like that beautiful debossing detail that Sue Wilson loves to put in her dies. Um, and it gives a really cool effect. You can kind of see it on the die itself as well. You can see those sort of raised solid bits of metal. They give that kind of debossing effect onto there. But for this card I've used the um, cogs as snowflakes. And I've also used the centres of the cogs as well. I've also tapped on some ultra sparkle paste in the frosty sparkle colour which has this beautiful iridescence to it this is one of my absolute favourites I'm pretty sure this is my second pot of this one now but absolutely gorgeous this one um, and I've just tapped that into the background and then for this kind of uh, grungy steampunky textured kind of a look I've used those kaleidoscope paints so I used the uh, turquoisey set but I think I used the metallic from the, yeah, the rust effect, the special effect rust paints. So this is the rust gold metallic, but I used it with all the turquoisey colours. Um, and the way you do this, I've, um, I don't know if I've actually shown it in a video. I know I did another up close video of some cards I did for a magazine and I'd used um, these paints on them as well. But basically you just take all of the different colours, put them out on your mat, tap them on or use a sponge or a brush, whatever you'd rather, um, and just layer up a few different colours, let it dry and then come back in with one of those metallic colours and just um, add tiny bits over the top to sort of pick out the detail in there. Sorry if you can hear Pumpkin barking in the background. I think she's seen something in the garden. Um, but yeah, really, really gorgeous to create like a, a falling snow kind of effect. And then having those uh, textury paints, they give a really cool look on here. I was going to, on some of them, do some triple thick embossing, but I totally forgot. I got carried away with the um, the texture paints on there as well. But I think triple thick embossing uh, to give like a really metallic, like a shiny metallic kind of look would look fantastic as well on some of these sentiments or the different die cuts too. So that was the Let It Snow sentiment. Then there's this gorgeous little dove in here as well that's full of cogs and it's got beautiful um, wings on there but also the cogs hidden inside there. Some of them have more of like a, a debossing detail around them and some of them have all of the fall away pieces in there as well. But really really gorgeous design of a dove and it's a perfect size for a small card um, like I like to make as well. I cut one from white and I put part of it like two thirds of it down here snipped it off and put the other third up here and then this one um, I cut one from a lighter teal colour and one from a darker teal colour I did the texture paint with the um, the rusty coloured metallic paint over the top on the lighter coloured die cut and then I shadowed it with the darker coloured die cut and it just really looks like an old battered patinaed kind of like metal ornament that you might find in the garden or something and I just did a little wordy as filled with joy for the sentiment on that one. So really pretty kind of, or like I say pretty, uh, grungy um, sort of steampunky kind of effects you can get with using textured sort of paints on there. But it would look absolutely beautiful just with the die cut as well. As you can see the white one just looks gorgeous. I mean you could just do this white one in the centre and tap some of that ultra sparkle paste on it to give it a bit of glitter. Or um, uh, put a few like... Um, the 3D PVA accents or your Nouveau drops or gems or sequins to make it look really sparkly as well. You don't have to go down the steampunk look, even though it is, uh, it's got cogs and stuff inside it, you can make them look pretty as well. But I just, I was really embracing the, the kind of grungier side for some cards, but still making them clean and simple. So, you know, they that still looks like a, a nice clean sort of card, but you've gone to town with all the grungy stuff on that main element on it. So that is the Dove die. Then there's this really cool one with, it's called Flying Santa, and it's got Santa's sleigh uh, with a blimp carrying it, and then it's got a little propeller on the back of it as well, and you've got the little strings holding the blimp up as well. And I've used this in a couple of different ways um, on two different cards, one using the texture paints and one just snipping the blimp off and having Santa's sleigh as well. And then to go along with Santa's sleigh, we've got Here Comes Santa as a sentiment too, where the O is a cog, which I think is really lovely. I love it when you sort of take out a letter and put an, an icon in there as well. So these two ones I have done, let's show you the textury one first. So this is, again, adding lots of that texture, although I used the turquoise colours. I went with the darker of the turquoise colours. I came back in with the pearlescent paint from the rust set, and I also came back in with the dark brown paint from the rust set as well and also to create the snow in the background because I've left it on a white background instead of having uh, white snow that's hard to see I watered down some of that uh, dark metallic 
colour and then splattered it in the background as well. And then for the sentiment, I stacked two of them together, but I snipped them. So you can actually still use both words. If you carefully snip um, where the two S's join there, you can actually um, still use both words from your one sentiment, but stack them on top of each other. Because I really wanted a white sentiment, but it was kind of too long for my card. So I thought if I snip them, I can nestle them back into each other and just put them straight over the top of the blimp portion. And it worked really nicely. So that's that one. And then I also thought if you don't want the blimp on the card as well, you can definitely just use Santa. And instead of having reindeer pulling him, he's just got the little um, propeller. So you could just kind of pretend that the propeller is enough to... Well, I suppose it's magic works, doesn't it? Instead of a propeller or a blimp or anything. But um, I just left the propeller on as it, so it kind of made a bit more sense than him just floating in the sky. Um, but I wanted to go with a, a silhouette kind of version. And I've just done a few extra snowflakes that I had left over to make some snow on there as well. And then to make it look extra gorgeous, rather than just being a black die cut, I used, let me find it in my tub of all these goodies, uh, this one. I used the Midnight Sparkle Glitter Kiss. I absolutely adore this one. Really, really gorgeous. There is also um, a Midnight, I don't know if it's called Midnight Sparkle actually, it might be called Rainbow Black or something. Um, there's actually a Glitter Bits, a holographic Glitter Bits that gives a similar kind of effect as well, but obviously with the larger particles in there too. But this just gives that beautiful fine effect and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got all sorts of like purples and greens and golds in it and it works really nicely for Christmas as well. So that is how I have done uh, Santa and the sentiment on that one. So the next die is called Gear Flower and it's a gorgeous design, one of um, Sue Wilson's kind of like lacy doily designs that they all layer up inside each other um, but it's got full of cogs and it obviously looks like some kind of, well to me that kind of looks like a Tudor rose having those little uh, bits pointing out of it but there's um, a gorgeous wiggly shape in here as well that doesn't necessarily scream Christmas, I mean none of this actually screams Christmas and um, you could definitely just use this as a backing piece for a different steampunk kind of card as well it doesn't have to be Christmas at all but those are all of the gorgeous dies that you're getting in there and you have the separate cutting edge for each of them so you can cut them into the card or you can just cut all of them together without the outside edges and then you'd get like a gorgeous doily kind of design with all of that intricate detail inside it kind of like it's shown on here but without those darker lines that are running around the outside of those shapes there although if you want that as well you can die cut everything like that place um, the circle and the wiggly one back in and then deboss them into um, the already die cut panel and then you would get basically what's shown on the front of the packaging too but the card that I did with this one is actually combining uh, not the next one I was going to show you the one afterwards that's got this gorgeous holly frame as well um, but I just layered it all up um, and look how beautiful it kind of looks just layered up so this is using um, this piece from white I've got two of these from red and I've just sort of stuck them in the middle so they're actually still separated here and the top red one I have used the red version of the ultra sparkle paste which is called apple red so gorgeous um basically glitter bits there is definitely an apple red glitter bits because I have that one um and it's just like glitter bits in a s suspension so that you can use it as a texture paste or you can just pat it on um to give a glittery effect to um your cardstock and I feel like this kind of look um as well with the green looks best when you do it on the same color of cardstock because I think it would look a little bit out of place if you put it on a different color because it would look all like uh you know sort of like a, I don't know, just, I don't think it would look quite right if you put it on a different colour, but if you put it on the same colour, it just gives that beautiful little bit of sparkle on there without sort of like being in your face, you can see all the little speckles of the different size particles, it's more when it catches the light, you see that on the actual same colour of cardstock as well. So the background piece is one of the next dies that I'll show you, and I put uh, two of them together, one in the lime green and one in that darker green, and then I've done the cardinal red as the red layer, I've done white, um, I think I pinched this out of the uh, same die set as this one as well, and then there's an extra cog that was left over from uh, the later set that I'll show you with all of those cogs in there too, and I've just used merry and bright as the sentiment on there, which is a, a wordy as well. So that is that set. Then the next one is called Snowflake, as you can tell it definitely looks like a snowflake, but again these ones could be like little peppermint candy sort of sweets, and you could even snip them out and then it's hardly got any cog details on it at all, and it would really look like um, just a, a generic kind of snowflake really, and you could even uh, cover the central section or just not use that central section. To 
to make it look a little bit less uh, steampunky but still Christmassy as well. So um, really pretty design and you've got all of the little dies in there. I think there's three in that one so you can cut the central section out as well. Um, and this was the card I made for that one. So really, really simple. Just cutting it from white and using that beautiful um, frosted... Frost, no, Frosty Sparkle Ultra Sparkle Texture Paste um, and I tapped some of it onto here oh and I also actually used as well as the Frosty Sparkle Texture Paste I used the Frosty Sparkle Glitter Kiss as well um, so the Glitter Kiss is just the small particles of glitter in there but the Ultra Sparkle Paste has basically got glitter bits in there so it's the three different size particles and I just used a mixture of the two of them um, to give a subtler or a slightly more um, impactful kind of glittery effect and I also just tapped it into the background as well you can see how beautiful it looks just tapped into the background really randomly I'm not sure how else you would achieve that um, you know just by using glue and sprinkling it on so I feel like you'd get too much glue but because the glitter is already in that gluey kind of suspension it works really nicely for this kind of thing and I've just layered up that central hexagon and then I've used a wordy to do peace on earth for this one and I also used two of these and twisted them around as well so you've got um, a 12 pointed um, snowflake instead of just six pointed on there as well so uh, really really gorgeous that one and a nice simple one if you were going to batch make cards as well and um, I think maybe having the cogs sort of in there makes it more of like a masculine kind of Christmas card I mean I feel like um, most Christmas designs can easily be made feminine or masculine but maybe with the addition of cogs it leans slightly more towards the masculine side as well but it's still very pretty because Sue Wilson's very good at doing all of these beautiful doily detailed kind of dies as well. So that is the snowflake. Okay, so the next set is the Mechanical Holly Square, which I've used on this card, which is why I've kept it out to the side. But look at the beautiful designs here. She's put holly leaves, and then she's made the berries into tiny little cogs. Then there's cogs, extra cogs here, beautiful swirly designs. There's all this sort of cog detail inside here. And you get a gorgeous piece um, shown in white here when you cut the two together as well, um, which looks really fantastic. And I've used it on the next card that I'll show you as well. But just to go back to this one, you can see how gorgeous gorgeous um, these holly leaves cut out on here um, and how you can like twist two of them together to give two different tones of green on there as well and you could definitely have put um, sparkle on these too or you can do the texture paint kind of effects onto these as well but the main card that I made with this one um, is to show all those beautiful cog um, sections on this as well. So this is that piece where you cut the both together and you get these gorgeous like waist pieces. So when I was cutting those frames for this one, I actually cut the centres out of them using um, the two different dies. So this one has that cog piece on the interior edge of it. And then I cut the next die next to it. So then I, I got the outside pieces to use on this card. And then I had this waist piece plus the bigger cogs to use on this card um, and I love sort of like layering them up together this is the central piece from this one this is the central piece from I think this one actually because um, I sort of mixed and matched them as I was going and then this is an extra large cog from the joy reef that I'll show you later on as well because I'm kind of saving my favorite ones till the end um, and then that is the happy xmas sentiment again just white with shadowed with sorry, red shadowed with white, um, and then I've just put it on a ripped piece of vellum as well. And this card you could definitely make look more sparkly by, again, using the um, Ultra Sparkle Texture Paste just to dab some glitter onto there as well. But I kept this one plain just to show a sort of difference between just using plain cardstock or adding that sparkle to it as well. Or you could also bring in glitter kisses for a finer sparkle on here, or just your metallic gilding polishes as well. Cut it from the colour that you want and then pick a metallic gilding polish to go over the top that's a similar kind of colour um, and it would work really, really nicely for this as well. So that is the uh, Mechanical Holly Square. Then the next one is one of my favourites. This is the Industrial Chic Poinsettia. And inside the petals of the flowers, there's actually cogs hidden in there. There's also like um, a debossing sort of cog detail in the centre of the flowers as well. And you have the inside and outside separate. So you can cut the outside one from something solid. I did vellum for mine. And then you can layer the detailed ones on top of it. And I love uh, these one. These sort of uh, leaves have got like almost like a zip feature or like the edges of cogs down the centre veining piece of them as well. 
So really pretty, I absolutely adore this set. Um, and this one, I've built up a little cluster. I've put some of the holly, which I'll show you in a second, uh, behind this that's got gorgeous like cogs in there as well. And then I've just layered up a couple of the uh, poinsettias. I've done two layers of red card, and then I've put the ultra sparkle texture paste on top of the red card, and then I've matted them onto vellum just to sort of mute where they overlap between each other. And I've done the larger and the medium sized one. There is also a smaller one, which is on the next card that I'll show you. And to finish off the centres, I just put buttons on there as well. And then for the leaves, instead of just keeping the um, lime green card lime green, I actually brought in some normal um, sparkle texture paste from Cosmic Shimmer in Lime Burst. So I just tapped some of this onto that cardstock and then put the detail over the top of it. Um, to sort of create that effect and then I went back in with a wordy again a happy Christmas one and mounted it on the same red card that I'd used to cut the poinsettias from absolutely adore that one I kind of don't want to part with this one because I love it so much but I'll have to make another one of those um, and then this one I wanted to show um, you know just a really simple way of using lots of the small poinsettias and you can see that beautiful uh, again with dog hair um, cog detail that debosses right into the centre of that poinsettia as well and the way I did this one I covered the backing piece with some of the um, Cosmic Shimmer or Creative Expressions double sided adhesive sheets then I placed all my poinsettias on there some of these little sprigs that are from the Holly set that I'll show you in a second um, and then I just put some Diamond Frost in the background uh, which is a really fine uh, sparkly glitter from Cosmic Shimmer and it's kind of got like a green sort of undertone to it it is a white glitter but it's it mostly reflects green I think it does have maybe a little bit of um, the ready kind of tone in there as well, but it gives a really nice effect with these colours that I wanted to use. And then I've just finished off the centre of it with another wordy, Christmas Wishes. Then the next die set is the Industrial Chic Holly. Absolutely adore this one. So it's got beautiful um, holly boughs on here that they both curve in different directions. Sue Wilson's fantastic for thinking about that kind of thing um, where she'll curve things in different directions so that you can have it as a corner element and have the two elements coming up the side. You could create a gorgeous large wreath with this um, and have the two different handedness of them or you can just use them and they kind of nestle into each other being both different directions and you can create a whole background with them that way um, and as well as the main pieces you have these two gorgeous extra little twiggy pieces as well so you can add in um, extra berries and twigs as you want them and the berries are cogs again and then you've also got three extra little cogs in here as well but absolutely love this set this set the poinsettia and the reef one that I'll show you last absolutely adore those sets I think they're fantastic um, so if you can get hold of them anywhere I, I don't know in the UK you might be able to find them if um, you know if you actually have an in-person shop or if you find a shop that doesn't tend to put things on sale as soon as they sort of retired or anything. Um, you might be able to find them or possibly on eBay. People might be selling them on there. Um, but yeah, really gorgeous dies. If you can get hold of them, I really enjoy these ones. Oh, I've really enjoyed playing with them. Um, so this one, really, really, really simple. I just cut two of the one direction and one of the other direction to create um, a background for a card. I've layered up the dark green on top of the light green. And before I layered them, I put that beautiful hunter green ultra sparkle paste onto the dark green die cuts as well. And just look how simple that is, but how effective that is. That's, um, well, technically probably like two to three passes through the die cutting machine to get all of those pieces cut out because you've got the two different versions plus tapping a little bit of glitter on and putting a wordy on there and it's like a beautiful Christmas card really really easily done and it's subtly cogs so it gives it that slight sort of like a little bit of a masculine feel to it but it could be like for someone who makes watches or someone who loves tinkering with um, you know taking things apart putting them back together it's just like a subtle nod um, to that kind of thing and then I've finished it off with a wordy season's greeting things and then this one is using them as like um, a spray kind of cluster one going one way one going the other way and again using those uh, rusty kind of paints on there as well so I think I went mostly for the rust on this one I used uh, the mid tones of the turquoises plus the um, two darker tones of the rust ones and then I brought in the uh, metallic that comes with the rust set I will show you those in detail when I've gone through um, the dyes as well and actually 
this is the let it snow sentiment with that debossing detail um, still visible on there as well so you can see that too um, I've added a few of the little cogs in the background which are the ones that come in the holly set um, so they go really nicely you can just build up a whole scene just with this holly set and that let it snow sentiment or you could put a wordy on there as well whatever you prefer um, but yeah just adding them on there using a darker turquoise a lighter turquoise because I felt it went with those turquoise colours of the rusty um, kaleidoscope paints but I didn't put the texture on all of them I just put it on the one of them to show but I also think this card would have looked fantastic um, triple thick embossing one of these as well or maybe doing all of them maybe doing one in metallic -y colours and then just doing clear on the other ones to make them look a little bit more special as well or tapping on um, some of the ultra sparkle paste as well so just a really simple one using the holly on that one and then I think this is the final set and I've got four samples using this one so this is the industrial chic wreath and it's got the beautiful word joy that's spelt out of like coggy sort of letters they've got those little cog pieces on them uh, you've got a fantastically large bow on this one as well and then you've got a whole wreath made up of uh, cogs plus all of the individual ones as well and I do actually think I didn't combine them but I think um, the cog wreath in the background with a couple of sprays of holly coming off of it behind the bow would have looked fantastic as well I didn't think to mix them together but I think behind the bow a bit of holly coming out of there because you can actually pinch off these at a smaller level so if you just want a smaller spray you can just pinch it off um, you know so it's just got the three leaves five leaves pinch them off and put them behind um, the bow on there as well to sort of accent it I think that would look really lovely so this is the wreath set gorgeous wreath perfect for small cards fits perfectly on one um you've got that lovely bow which you can use on all sorts of different things as well as putting it on the wreath as well um the joy works perfectly inside the wreath or just with the bow on another card and the snowflakes work perfectly or sorry i just called them snowflakes the cogs work perfectly as snowflakes um just using them from white card or cutting them from uh, light blues turquoises um any sort of um uh, specialty kind of cards that have got like an iridescent finish to them silver mirror cards glitter cards anything you want to they'll look absolutely perfect so the first one I've got here this is using two wreaths one from the lighter green one from the darker green the darker green I put the ultra sparkle paste onto the lighter green I put um some gold glitter kiss to begin with golden sand kiss and then I had also found this in my stash so I put some of this on as well which is the lime burst um, sparkle texture paste which I showed you earlier as well so they've got a gold and a green on them and then the darker green has got the ultra sparkle paste then I cut the reef in half I layered them both together cut it in half half on one side half on the other side to give almost um, Sue Wilson's belt buckle kind of idea that she likes to do um, and then I've done the joy in the center again with some sparkle paste on there in the apple red colour to match in with the sparkliness of the other elements. I've put some of the cogs in there to be falling snow down the centre. I decided it looked too plain in the middle so I put some white string around it and then I just stuck the joy sentiment on a piece of vellum and then put that on top of the spring, the spring, the string as well. Um, so that is that one. Then this one was going to town with all of those rusty kaleidoscope paints. The joy and the bow are done with the rust set and then the main reef is done with the kaleidoscope set but bringing in some of the rust and using the rust metallic -y colour on there as well. So gorgeous texture that you get. Look at that beautiful texture. It really gives it like an aged rusty kind of look and it's so easy to do. It really doesn't take long at all. You literally just die cut your piece, tap a lot of this on, leave it to dry, come back in with a little bit of metallic and then you can put it together and it just gives like an instant uh, rusty kind of effect. Although I've got another technique for a rusty effect as well. But this was uh, what I've done for this card. Really, really simple. Layering uh, the dark turquoise behind them as well and then using a bit of foam tape on the word joy so it's raised up a little bit too. Then I did another sort of um, simpler, prettier kind of version using the Joy three times, again with that lime burst um, sparkle texture paste just dabbed onto the top light green ones. I've done the bow with a thicker kind of layer of the um, apple red ultra sparkle paste on top of it and I layered it onto a plain one as well just to give it a little bit more like movement on there too. And then I've just done random white cogs in the background to be sort of like falling snow. So just a really simple design, not necessarily really grounding anything but just like um you know a, a very easy one to kind of recreate if you didn't want to uh, do three words you could pick a larger sentiment and have one word on there as well but I think it just works really really nicely 
And then the final card that I have done, this is Tim Holt's Eroded Metallic Technique. I recently got hold of um, a lot of the Distress Paints. Uh, uh, one of my viewers and friends very kindly sent them to me and I will be doing some more tutorial videos on them when I get a chance to as well. Um, but I was obviously watching lots of Tim Holt's videos on like Distress Paints and stuff and... Um, I came across this technique and um, I tried it on an embossing folder which I'll probably do in a tutorial video but um, I really loved how it would sort of work with these cogs so to create this effect you can also uh, just look up Tim Holtz eroded uh, metal kind of um, technique as well I did it slightly differently because I used all the metallic colours rather than just one um, but the way I did this um, I cut a bunch of cogs as I was cutting everything I was just cutting loads and loads of cogs um, did them white on white so they're just white cards stuck onto white card and then you take some of your normal colours of distress paint so I used in case you wanted to know or just to remind myself in the future I used stormy sky uh, Lucky Clover, Peacock Feathers and Pine Needles as well. Those three are from the um, retired colours and this one I just bought individually because I really like Peacock Feathers. Um, so I used those four colours to create the background. Then you let that dry and the way I did it was I added silver, which is the brush pewter, all over it. And then you do Tim Holtz technique of spraying water on it but making puddly areas, partly drying it and then pulling the paint back off. Um, so I did that in silver first and then I did another layer mixing the tarnished brass and the antique bronze together. Um, and then you do the same thing, you spray it with water, you heat dry it with your um, heat tool just to dry the areas where the water isn't. And then you pick off the water that's kept the paint wet and you get this beautiful um, technique. I'll probably explain it better if I do a tutorial video on it or you can find um, Tim Holtz videos. I think I've seen it in two or three different videos that he's done um, but it gives such a beautiful effect and I also came back in with a little bit of uh, the pine needles which is the slightly darker green and tapped a little bit extra on the on the top of some of the cogs as well so it just gives a really cool metallic-y kind of effect so if you really love more um, painty kind of techniques this one is a bit messier than using the rust paints and stuff but if you can't get hold of those paints anymore because I'm not sure if you can this would be an alternative with uh, paints that you can still get hold of um, and I just used a wordy to finish that off as well so I really love how that one turned out so I wanted to also just show you the paint sets just in case you can still get hold of them this is how they come so the kaleidoscope set which I'm not 100% sure on the colour, it was either green or teal it was called, but that's the kind of set of paints that you get, and I like to work lightest to darkest, but I think you can work darkest to lightest if you want as well, and they're basically just an acrylic paint that has like this texture in them, I don't know if it tells you, they just say they're an opaque textured medium for creating amazing colourful effects on porous surfaces, building up layers of painted colour. But it's basically got, oh it does actually tell you on here, apply with a brush or a sponge using a stippling technique. Apply the paint in layers to create a colourful effect, add the metallic paint last to highlight the features and texture. So it does actually tell you how to use them on the side of the bottles as well. But I really enjoy using these and they're all just slightly different tones of each other. Um, and they give a gorgeous, as you saw on all of those cards, textured effect. The um, Kaleidoscope set comes with gold pearl, which gives slightly more of a, a lighter white kind of finish with that pearly effect. But the rust set that I also have, these are the only two sets of these that I have. But I'm very glad I got these two because... I feel like they're the best two sets to get. They also do uh, pink, purple, and there might have been a yellowy, orangey set as well. I think there was four coloured sets of them. Um, but this is the rusty kind of set. So you can also do um, rust effects with these as well. And you get all the four different tones of the rusty colours and the beautiful dark tone. The dark tone and this tone, I think, were the two that I was mixing in with a lot of the uh, turquoise colours. And then in the rust set, the metallic you get is the rust gold. So this is a darker gold metallic. But obviously, um, if you had, maybe you, you could only get hold of the turquoise set, you could definitely use um, a different metallic paint that's in a darker gold colour. Or you could just use uh, gilding polish or mousse or... Um, 
the gilded touches as well now you could use those to just add your accents on there as well actually gilded touch with a bit of red would look fantastic on some of these too um yeah so yeah i just wanted to show you those paints as well just in case you've never seen them or you were interested in trying them and you want to try and get hold of them they come in a pack of five little bottles like this in one pack together um, and that's how you get hold of them and those are the two sets that i have the rust and the turquoisey colors so I hope you enjoyed this sort of random up close video showing you this industrial chic festive collection from Sue Wilson from a few years back um, but you might have it in your stash and you might have completely forgotten about it and maybe there is somebody in your life who would really appreciate a steampunky Christmas card this year and um, maybe this will give you an idea of how to use some of the sets that you might have in your stash or if you're in America and you got hold of them recently um, from Scrapbooking Made Simple um, you might you know want a bit more inspiration of how to use them and a, a more of an up close look at the different samples that I've created as well so yeah I really hope this was helpful hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video bye